What is up, bros and brats? I'm Ink Slasher, and today we are going to be talking about Infinite Warfare, and more specifically, three things Infinite Warfare 100% absolutely needs to be a successful game, because let's be honest, the reveal of Infinite Warfare did not go well in the slightest. If that's something you want to hear me talk about, the whole Battlefield 1 reveal versus the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare reveal, and all of that, if that's something you would find interesting, let me know down in the comment section below, or just hit that like button, and then the more likes I get, the more I know people want to see that but that's beside the points as we know the reveal did not go well for infinity ward or activision it did not go well in the slightest and that's that's a whole nother topic altogether but i think the game itself still could be very very good all they have to do is get three things and three things alone right now i'm putting some things aside i'm putting some things aside that we just kind of expect from call of duty at this point those being really really good weapon balance like if we look at the past few call of duty games putting advanced warfare aside because advanced warfare was like the first game made by sledgehammer but if we look at ghosts and we look at black ops 3 and even black ops 2 weapon balance in those games was extremely well done there was really no guns that stood above all the rest. Like, if we look at Advanced Warfare, we had the BAL and the ASM-1. The other games, they are so proficient at making these Call of Duty games that the guns are just kind of balanced. Another thing would be the connection. Over time, the connection in any Call of Duty game has just got better and better and better. A lot of people are going to disagree with it. A lot of people are. Another thing I think everyone doesn't want is skill-based matchmaking. I'm pretty sure everyone has spoken out against that, and I really don't think that they're going to put it in the game. But I do think there is three things and three things alone that Infinite Warfare, if it has, will be a successful Call of Duty. And let's get into it and talk about what those three things are. So the first thing of the three, and the thing I think is most important, is the thing Black Ops 3 does the worst, and it's score streaks. Score streaks are absolutely horrible in Black Ops 3, if, if you ask me. First of all, they're not powerful enough, and for what you get, they cost way too much score. Like, sometimes you need to get, like, 17 kills to get a score streak in team deathmatch that's actually going to get you like five kills and five kills alone who remembers back in modern warfare 2 when you could call in a harrier and the harrier alone would get you like seven kills it would double the amount of kills you are i loved that and i think we need something like that in the game again because if you read any of the comments on any of the infinite warfare trailers most people are saying, I don't care if it's boots on the ground, I don't care if you're flying around with a jetpack, I don't care if you have to run around with a goddamn dildo up your ass. As long as the game is fun and keeps me entertained, that is what I want. And one of the things, to me, that was the most fun of any Call of Duty games was these overpowered score streaks that weren't only overpowered, but would help you build towards other score streaks. And what I mean by this is, let's say I get a Raps in Black Ops 3. That Raps, every kill that Raps gets, gives me 25 points. Those 25 points are alright, and it kind of helps me build to another score streak, but why aren't they giving me a hundred score? Do you remember back in Modern Warfare 2 when you could get a chopper gunner and just for having that chopper gunner, you had actually a pretty decent chance of actually getting that tactical nuke just from receiving that 11 score streak or kill streak, I guess it was back then. That was freaking fantastic, and I want that again, and here's how you do it. So the first step to this is bring back the tactical nuke. I don't care whether it's called a DNA bomb, I don't care whether it's called a black hole, I don't care whether it's called the exploding spaceship, I don't care. I want a score streak that kills everyone on the map and ends the game, and I want it to be easy to get. I don't want it to be 25 gun kills alone. I want my score streaks to stack up to it. I want it to be a set amount of score. And I like score streaks. Don't get me wrong. I think score streaks are a great thing. It incentivizes players to play the objective, and that is fantastic. But let's say it costs 2,500 points to get a tactical nuke that kills everyone on the map and wins you the game. All right, leave that there. But make it so that every score streak kill you get, so let's say you call in an attack helicopter, or for the sake of infinite warfare, an attack spaceship. You call in the attack spaceship, and it gets you five kills. I want those five kills not to be worth 125 points, I want them to be worth 500 points. Yes, I want every kill you get with a score streak to be worth the exact same amount, or at least very, very close to the amount you get with a weapon kill. Because that's fun. I want Call of Duty to be fun. 
I want it so that I feel rewarded for doing well in the game. And guess what a tactical nuke does? It's a plausible thing to get that every single player who is playing can possibly potentially get. You don't have to be too good. Because that's the problem with the way the DNA bombs were and all of that stuff. People could get them and it was always the amazing players who could get them. But it was weapon kills only. So it kind of left the middle of the road players at an impossible score streak that they could never get. And yeah, you could say, oh, practice makes perfect, eventually they could get it, but that takes so much work. I want the player who comes home after work can sit down, and that one time, that one time throughout the whole life cycle of the game, they're able to get a 2,500 point score streak. How fun is that for them? That just makes them want to play that much more and i think that's the first most important thing that infinite warfare needs now as you can tell most of the things i'm going to talk about today are for the most part opinion based this is something i want in the game but i also want to hear what you guys want what do you guys think the three most important things are to have an infinite warfare to make it a good game let me know down in the comment section below or you can let me know on twitter that link is in the description now the next thing i want the next thing i want that i think is incredibly incredibly important is a competitive playlist that's actually good. I think it's great that we have casual games. Call of Duty, for the most part, is a casual shooter, but if we look at something like Counter-Strike, the reason why its community is growing so, so much is because it has an awesome competitive playlist. And guess what? They have casual games too. They have lots and lots and lots of casual games, gun games, regular team deathmatch, all of that stuff. But I want to see in Call of Duty an awesome, awesome competitive mode. And I think that starts with having a good ranking system. So what I want to see is, yes, I love the XP progression. And I think you should include the XP progression, just like it is in regular games, into the competitive games. I think that level that you hold in a regular team deathmatch game should carry over into competitive games. But I think there should be ELO rankings, just like there is in CSGO. And even back in the day, Halo 3 had this. And when moving forward to Halo Reach and Halo 4, they actually got rid of this ranking system. And guess what happened to Halo? The series sales went down and down and down to where it is today. And I know Halo 5 did all right, but look, look how many players are playing the game now, but compared to look how many players were playing Halo 3. This ELO system makes it so that when you win lots of games and win lots of games and win lots of games, you get a higher ranking, a higher ranking, until you're the top of the mill, you're the global elite, you're the platinum, you're the diamond, you're the grandmaster, whatever ranking you are in that division. And they should have seasons. They should have seasons because seasons have been proven to make players play more because as soon as that season resets, and I know they do have some of this, I know they ha do have some of this in Call of Duty, but it needs to be worked as a big part of the game. When you finish even a regular game, it should show your competitive ranking at the end of that game. It should be a bigger part of Call of Duty, and I want them to work that into the game. Guess what game had the best competitive mode? It was Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 had an actually pretty decent competitive mode. Guess when competitive Call of Duty was doing the best? Back in Black Ops 2. Guess what Call of Duty games sold the best? Black Ops 2. I think there is a correlation there, and I think we need to see a really, really good version of a competitive playlist put into Infinite Warfare. Something with an ELO rating, something that's displayed, something that people want to succeed at to become a better player and hold more time played. Because the more people want to improve at the game, the more they're going to play the game, the more hours people are going to put into it, the more people want to play the game, therefore the better the game does. I think that's an, another extremely important thing for Infinite Warfare to have, is an amazing, amazing competitive mode. The next thing I want to talk about is something that I wouldn't normally include on this list, because it's something I think Call of Duty does pretty good for the most part, but I think in Call of Duty Ghost was done horribly, and that was map design. The map design in Call of Duty Ghost was not good in the slightest, and the only problem I had with it is the maps were too damn big. Maps like Stonehaven, Siege, these massive, massive maps are not what Call of Duty is made for. Call of Duty is made for this fast-paced, fast-paced action, and where you're constantly getting in gunfights, where you know where the spawns are, and that plays into part of the game. When you have these Battlefield-esque maps, it takes away from what Call of Duty is at the core. And I think if we have great map design, if we have these awesome, awesome score streaks, and a wicked competitive mode, 
Call of Duty can be a force to be reckoned with even if it's not a boots on the ground game. But let me know what the three things you most likely want to see in Infinite Warfare. Let me know down in the comment section below. I'm really, really interested. I promise you I will read every single comment in the comment section below. So if you made it this far, it'd be super greatly appreciated if you could leave a like rating. It really, really does help with the video and more specifically the channel. So if you enjoyed the video and made it this far, a like rating would be super greatly appreciated. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I upload new Call of Duty videos every single day of the week thank you so much for watching i love every single one of you guys except for robbie i hate that guy everyone else though i love you and until next time peace out